Alright everybody, good afternoon. This is Barbara Reese from the Bronx. And uh, I am the in, in the infamous Mickey D's with the fam. The fam fam. Say hi, Tito. Say hi to your fans. Say a gizzard How you doing? Don't be shy. He's so shy. Oh, Lord. And then my boy boy is eating his chicken nuggies and his uh, organic juice drink. Apple, happily ever. Oh, that's so cute! How they uh, did a play on happily ever after. They put happily ever after. They did a play on the words, which is um, ingenious, isn't it, baby? Look at that face! Oh, Maran, I can't. He loves it. He loves his McDonald's in moderation, of course. And I'm having a, a fish fillet, which I was very surprised to see there was actual fish inside. I thought it was going to be all batter. I was about to say no. And what is Tito having? Quarter pounder. Tito's having a quarter pounder. Mmm, tear it open. Go all in. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's very, very quiet in here, guys. I'm trying to be reserved because there's people, you know, doing their studies and whatnot or reading. I don't want to be rude. But um, look at the day. It's a cloudy, very kind of quiet, where you can hear a pin drop kind of day. Very surprisingly so. And when we would drive, because we have a post office box here. So we come here to uh, retrieve our mail. And we got good news. Tito got his pin number, so we're going to be good. You know, we got to, um, you know, we've been saving all of our money up, even though. It uh, hasn't really made a difference. I mean, it made a difference financially, but um, it hasn't made a difference as far as us finding a place because, like I said, we have bad credit. So, you know, unless you're, you know, a millionaire, which if you're a millionaire, that's rare you're going to have bad credit. Do you think there's millionaires that have bad credit? But I doubt it, right? That doesn't make sense unless they're totally irresponsible. Mm -hmm. there's, that's the only way, which would be absolutely ridiculous, really. You know, if you have all that money and you're not paying off your, your debts, I mean, that's a fool right there. You're just setting yourself up for a fool to go for bankruptcy, like right? <laughs> what do you mean? Explain. So went to bankruptcy too. He had bad credit as a millionaire? You know, he was a billion. He was a millionaire that went to from to a billionaire, then went back down to a millionaire, and then to a billionaire again. You know, so his um, his status did quite some dips at uh, at certain point in times in his life. You have a blessed day, Miss. God bless. I said you have a blessed day. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, what a nice lady. Right, Weedy B? She was very, very nice to my baby. And, um, like I said, uh, this place is, um, you know, it's right at the edge when you enter in here. So it's like it stands right out and people get drawn in here, you know, to get uh, some shelter from the storms, you know. If have, someone has nowhere to go, you know, sometimes they sit in these very booths just to get, uh, you know, a little bit of comfort. Just warm up a little bit. There was a dear friend of mine that would always come in here. I know him. He used to always work at, um, at Snow Fresh. Snow Fresh is one of the um, warehouses back in the other streets off of, uh, I think, uh, Randall. And um, he would always come in. And he had a place to live. But the one thing I didn't like is that when I went into his apartment, one day he had a dog in the cage in the dark and after that I really lost all respect for him I said oh my god it was a it was a, a, a pit bull but it's not like he had him in there just you know because he was cleaning or you know the dog was you know I bit somebody it didn't do anything wrong but the dog was becoming very angry and I said to him I said you can't you can't leave the dog in the cage like that it's cruel and he just wouldn't listen to me and I had to call the you know the ASPCA I, I hope to God that they did something and years later, you would see this man, and every time i come into McDonald's, he'd be sitting there, and I would say hi to him, but I really would always have that image of that poor dog in the cage. I couldn't, uh, 
I couldn't understand how somebody, you know, could do that, could just leave their dog in the dark in a cage. Like, it was, you know, I felt like he had been hurt in his life where he was taking it out on the dog. And, you know, I find that to be unacceptable. I find that people that have been hurt, you know, in horrific ways or are subjected to, you know, a lot of abuse in their life or in their childhood, sometimes instead of being more sympathetic towards others and animals, they go the other way and become very, very bitter and angry with the world and taken out on people. That's why they say sometimes the cycle of abuse needs to be broken in certain aspects because some people be, are, are molested and they become the molester. Some people are physically abused and they become the physical abuser. You know, it's a cycle. And I'm so glad that God made me a person that would, could never ever be that way because my heart breaks even for the smallest of beings, even the, even the bugs. Like if I see someone kill a bug, you know, I feel, even for a mosquito, I feel bad for the thing. It's just right, you know? I've always been that way. And uh, you have to have compassion on even the smallest of beings. You know, that's how I feel. And I found out recently that monks are the same way, that they don't kill bugs. Like, and I was like, wow, I, I'm relatable with a monk, and that is really, that's really cool that I can have that kind of connection, and I had no idea. You know, I knew they were very peaceful beings and stayed one with the earth and centered and all of that. But I didn't know that um, that they didn't kill even bugs like that. That kind of respect is rare, you know. I know people sometimes, they don't think of it because it's second nature, because of conditioning. But in all reality, you know, what what is a bug going to do to you? I mean, I know sometimes they can be a nuisance and annoying and, and especially roaches, they infestate, and some bugs, you know, can bite you and, and, and hurt you, especially if you're allergic. You know, in circumstances with everything, you know, there's different probabilities that can be the outcome. Like if someone's allergic to a bug, you know, when they get bit, they can get really hurt from that. But uh, then you stay clear and free from them, you know, as much as you can. This way it doesn't have to be you know, in kind of a uh, contrast of interaction where you would have to kill them. But bees, if they sting you, they die anyway, which is uh, really kind of amazing if you think about it. I believe their stinger falls off and they die. That's why I think at all costs bees try not to sting because their instincts know, know that they will die if they have to defend themselves in that type of way. But I feed bees. I've showed you guys videos. If you go in my archives, my videos, you will see that uh, I had a couple of bee friends that were in the house. And I was never afraid of them. As a matter of fact, I would feed them honey. And um, they would crawl on my fingers. And um, they were very, very, like, I don't know. I was one with them. I was at peace with them. They didn't... Uh, bother me and I thought it was so amazing that this bee was on my finger and I was feeding it honey with their Priyaska straw. It's like a little straw that um, protrudes out of their, you know, the mouth area and uh, that's how they eat and pollinate. It's amazing. And th they also pollinate from their, um, their feet, you know, their little, their little legs, their little legs, they land on the flowers and they land on another flower and they gather the pollination. It's really an amazing process. Without bees, this earth would be in pretty much dire straits. We need bees to survive. We really do. You know, bees are very important to the ecosystem. But anyway, guys, I'm going to do another story. I just wanted to, you know, show the McDonald's because it's really, no, you know, it's a, um, <sighs> No, Weedy Bee. He's making a little mess there, which is very natural for kids to do. That's why, you know, sometimes you got to let him, you got to let him experiment with things. As long as he's not hurting himself, it is a bit of a mess, but... As long as he eats, he manja mia. You got to manja. And uh, sometimes kids like to see experiments up. They like to pour the juice on the bread. Then they see it expand. He learned something new yesterday. 
You know what he did? He took the bubbles in a cup in the bathtub. This is while you were sleeping, Tito. And he took two containers. He poured one container. And I did not teach him this. He learned on his own. Okay? I didn't show him this. He learned just by visual and seeing us do it. But he did something different than what we do. He took two containers, he poured soap in the one container, and then he took another container and was pouring water on top of the, um, of the soap. And then he would take his hand and swish it all up and make the bubbles. He's seen you do it. See how kids learn? They pick up things. Their brain is an absolute sponge. That's why it's so important to teach and read to your kids at a, at a young age. This way their development can, you know, really surpass other kids. If you're on top of it, you're always reading to him. I read a lot of things to him lately. I've been reading, not, I have a book from the 1970s. It was from published in 1976, and it's the original. It's a knock-knock joke book, and it's you so like cool. It. Eat it. You know that French fry that's always at the bottom of the barrel? It's always like hard as a rock and burned. Everyone knows about those. They're like little knives and stuff. You got to be careful with them. The variation, you know what I'm talking about, right? There's always that one fry at the bottom. Yeah. That's uh, sharp as hell. <laughs> <laughs> right, Weedy B? Look at my little angel, everyone. He enjoyed his Mickey D's, like I said, in moderation. And uh, we're going to leave McDonald's now, yeah. but I just wanted to get, you know, a little visual of the, the infamous McDonald's where, you know, Chris always comes in here, you know, back in the, uh, the day and do his little interviews in here with uh, my friends, my dear friend Desire, and I hope she's doing okay. You know, that was a very near and dear friend to my heart. Okay, guys, God bless you, and uh, I will get back to this in about two shakes of a lamb's towel. Ciao.